Good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to this prayer at the close of the day. It is Wednesday. It is the ninth day of October, year of our Lord, 2024. I do pray this finds you well. I returned home just a short while ago from the Fall Pastors Conference. It was a joint conference for the uh, Central, Illinois, Central Illinois District and the Southern Illinois District. It was down in the Southern Illinois District in uh, Carlisle. Uh, very, uh, a very, very good conference. So thank you to those who planned it and invited our speakers. We had two of their fantastic, uh, wonderful uh, worship services, the Divine Service. Received the sacrament a couple of times uh, and then made it home safe. The weather's been perfect here. I uh, wish we could say the same about the rest of the nation, uh, crop farmers driving up, bringing in their crops in earnest here, and we'll pray for Florida now and their continued recovery efforts throughout Florida and continuing in the Carolinas. Pay attention to the information that is shared on our Facebook page um, and then through other avenues. You can go to the Synodical website too uh, about just giving cash donations or, as I mentioned uh, a while ago, um, uh, using these online vendors to su supply the materials that are needed. I found that worked best for me. Also, you can volunteer to, if you have uh, Lutheran Emergency Response Alert training, uh, Lutheran Emergency Response Team training, you can certainly call and volunteer, be mobilized to go down and help clear trees and things like that, clean up. Uh, there's opportunity, plenty of opportunities to do that, and there will be for quite some time. So there's, there's phone numbers, uh, contact information for that. If you need any, any help with that, uh, reach out to me, and I'll be happy to assist you with that. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last, amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. And tonight we turn to the daily lectionary, picking up um, uh, picking up the daily lectionary where we left off when I was last with you on Sunday evening. So we're going to read tonight, according to that lectionary, from Matthew chapter 10, the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 10, starting at verse 24 and reading through the end of the chapter. And this is our Lord speaking. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for the disciple to be like his teacher, and the servant like his master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered that will not be revealed or hidden that will not be known. What I tell you in the dark, say in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. I do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? And not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. But even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore. You are more value than many sparrows. So everyone who acknowledges me before men, I also will acknowledge before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I also will deny before my Father who is in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father and a daughter against his mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a person's enemies will be those of his own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives you receives me. And whoever receives me receives him who sent me. The one who receives a prophet, because he is a prophet, will receive a prophet's reward. And the one who receives a righteous person, because he is a righteous person, will receive a righteous person's reward. And whoever gives one of these little ones 
even a cup of cold water because he is a disciple, truly I say to you, he will by no means lose his reward. And that is the gospel of the Lord. So this comes in a long discourse, again, much like the Sermon on the Mount, not quite that long. Um, uh, he's being asked questions, and he sends out the, the, the 12 apostles. And uh, he, as he sends them out, he, he gives them these instructions. So these are the 12. We go back to the beginning of chapter 10. These, these 12 Jesus sent out, instructing them after we hear the roll call, if you will, of the 12. And he's reminding them and us what life in the church is going to look like. Uh, and this, is, this is very important for us to remember when we think about these texts. They're, they're hard readings. They're hard for me to preach on when they come up um, uh, because they're just so heavy. And our, our Lord, you know, of course, is always completely earnest. He is God. But just the sort of the, the gravity of what he's saying here about what life in the under the under the gospel can look like in this fallen world is quite startling. So the first thing he reminds us is that in this in this segment is that you know we his disciples are not above his teacher nor a servant above his master. Now that's important for all of us to remember. It's important important for me as the pastor. So when I come to texts like this that are like, wow, this is wow, you know, and 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 sinfully thoughts do run across your mind it's like ooh, i don't know how this is going to be received but then you have to push that aside because who 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 do i speak for and i can only speak his word not to clean it up not to dilute it you know to make it more palatable i just have to speak his word now as a trust the word too now you know it's um, um uh important too that you trust the word to do what it says it's going to do and sometimes we do you realize as a pastor, you know, sometimes we need to hear these words to break break down our sinful selves and kind of crush us so God can rebuild us out of the ashes, you know, of our ego and our pride. Uh, so he's reminding us, okay, you're not above him. And then he says, look what they did to me. You know, the fallen world does not want to receive the light of Christ. And we go out in the community, we are, now it doesn't mean people are, you know, God isn't working and he's in, you know, people are you know, looking for the light, life of Christ, if we can say it that way. They're looking, they're looking for answers. That's maybe a little more precise to what we see, but we have them. Uh, and, and, you know, we also learn from our Lord how it is that we are to speak of the truths that he gives us. But he warns, he's like, okay, just, just I'm telling you, I'm telling you up front. <coughs> oh, pardon me. I'm telling you up front, you know, if they called the master of the house, Beelzebul, you know, Satan, demonic, uh, how much more will they malign those of his household? I don't claim to be Jesus. I'm a pastor. I, I am the under-shepherd of Jesus in this place. It's kind of a, uh, a technical way of saying that. And and so I you know speak the words he's given me, and that's really all I have. You know, that's the tool he's given me is his word, and to proclaim that word. Really got to trust in that. You know, sometimes, just maybe a little side aside about that, and this kind of brings us into the next section, is... You know that we, we we do struggle with trusting that word, and we think we need to dress it up or 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 do all these other things, package it. I don't know. Um, uh, you know, in one of the you know we have to sell it somehow. And it's like no, no. You know, we just proclaim it, and God will work through that. Now, proclaiming can look different. You know, it doesn't mean me standing in the pulpit all the time. You know, I'm preaching now. I have conversations with people. That's part of that preaching office. The preaching office isn't a place. It's what I do. And, you know, but again, at the end of the day, all I have is the word. So with this word in hand, the word of Christ, the word of light, that, you know, the sinful fallen world hates, doesn't matter. It's all we have. It's all we need. It says don't have any fear of them. Don't, don't worry about it. Don't worry about what you're going to experience. And these apostles are all going to die for the most part, violent deaths. Have no fear of them, for nothing is covered that will not be revealed or, or hidden that will not be known. God promises us you know, that in the end, he, you know, he's already victorious, but we'll see that victory. And, and I do pray this a lot as I turn. You know, I, we, one of the things, and this is maybe a book for book club to consider, Remember, anybody can be part of our book club. You can, even if you're not a member of our church, you can you can zoom in every every Monday night. 
with the exception of this past Monday because I wasn't there. Um, but it's a book, um, and the name escapes me now. But uh, it, it's a few years old. It's not, uh, um, but it, it's it's only gotten worse. Where the the author, who's an apologist, it, part of the things that caught my mind as we were talking about it in our lectures or in our conference this week is like, you know, in America, people in the the examples he put before us that are quoted in the book are these are college educated people with like master's degrees or, or college that, you know, really think the world would be a better place if Christians were eliminated, killed. I mean, it's stark to see these quotes. I mean, it, it, in America, you know, it's like, and, uh, um, uh, yeah, so, boy, that maybe I have to, I'll read through the book. I, I, of course, the nice thing is I can sit at a conference like that and spend money with, on my phone and just by I mean, download the book and it's immediately available for me to read. Uh, so I'll start reading that very soon here. But, I, you know, we, I did have a chance to look through a little bit of it. Anyway, you know, you see stuff like that. It's frightening. But then you come to these words, Chris, have no fear. You're covered with the blood of Christ. You're an heir to everlasting life. Yours is the kingdom of heaven. Go way back to this, the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount. We're outside of the Sermon on the Mount now. But, you know, that teaching doesn't stop. Uh, you know, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Um, have no fear of them. You know, have no fear of them. And then, um, you know, what he tells us in the dark, proclaim from the rooftops. You know, it, our neighbors need to hear what we carry. They do. They're searching. They really are. I, I had a professor in seminary that told me, not me personally, but the class, he says, you know, listen to secular music and secular things. Don't. And I do. I don't like some of the things I listen to. I don't know. There's things I just won't listen to with vulgar, too vulgar and stuff like that. But his point in that is like you'll you'll see that people are thinking spiritually, theologically. They're searching. And, I, and it's it is amazing. You know, I, I, I will listen to songs and um, I tend to be more rock and roll, pop. Uh, but I listen to some country and western too like that. Um, uh, I like all different types of jazz. Um and but particularly like in rock and roll, and I have no familiarity with hip hop. I couldn't name three hip hop artists. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, I'm not sorry, but uh, if that offends you. Forgive me. Uh, but you know, even classical music and stuff like that, it's there. You know, these people people are are questioning, searching, and trying to make sense of all this. And you know, and we have these answers. We have the answer. So shout, you know, from the house steps. Don't and, and as we do, though, we know the community isn't going to receive what we say with open arms. There will be those in the community that that do, but the community itself wants to shut us up. Do not fear those who can kill the body and kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both the soul and body in hell. What's the worst thing that that's going to happen to us? Remember, I, I say this to people not in this context, but to get them to verbalize the reality of life in a fallen world, I will sometimes ask people, especially when their kids are concerned and they're, they're sometimes a little too cling a little too tightly to their kids. If you know, they're asking me for, for, and that can create some problems. And I'll say to them, the parent, and I'll ask them to verbalize it so they can hear the words coming out of their own mouth. And I'll ask them, look them in the eye and say, what's the worst thing that could happen to them? And they, they look at me at first, kind of what? And I said, well, what's the worst thing that could happen to them? You know, and, and I'll say, I need you to say it. You know, they could die. Okay. Do we want that to happen? No. Do we, will, will we pray for the safety of your child? Yes. Should you pray for the safety of your child? Yes. You know, and we all hope that our children will outlive us. Of course we do. You know, but um, it doesn't always work out that way. Uh that, that child is baptized. So they are already an heir to the kingdom of heaven. So we come back to this one. It's like, we remember, I already know what I am in Christ. And, you know, of course, we have to pray for strength and everything like that. I know what I am in Christ. So, you know, what's the worst thing that can happen to me? And, and, and you know, as this goes on, think about him telling the 12, we're going to go out, you know, we, we, we are part of the Holy Christian Apostolic Church, and, and they have to be united in their voice. You know, and they have to proclaim, you know, accurately the Christ uh, and everything they saw and did. 
uh, and be faithful to that and to, to the command that Christ gives them, them, it's like, hey, you know, it doesn't do anybody, you know, if you're afraid of this, then, you know, what good is that? Now he's going to be with them and give them the spirit. We see Pentecost, you know, so, uh, and I pray for the spirit all the time. I mean, I have the spirit because of my baptism, I pray for more. So I would be bold in my proclamation of the word. You can do that too. You know, there's nothing wrong with praying to to God for more spirit, like, you know, strengthen me, uh, you know, that I may be bold in my witness, that I may not be fearful, that I may not, you know, uh, uh, um, be silent when I know I should be speaking. Not everything has to be a sermon, but not every situation in life needs to lead to a sermon. But you will find that people are thinking, and, you know, it's 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 interesting for me because I, I'll, I when I go out in public, <laughs> when I go out in public, like, I'm, yeah, when I go out in public, when I go out to public, very public places by myself, um, you know, go grab a bite to eat or something like that. I, uh, uh, I will usually sit at, you know, if it's a restaurant that has a bar, I don't usually, um, I'll sit at the bar when it's weird to sit. I think it's, I just feel weird, weird sitting at the table by myself. Plus it isolates me. I'll sit at the bar, talk to the bartender, talk to the people sitting next to you. It's, I, it has led to some of the most enjoyable conversations and evenings, sometimes quite lengthy, uh, that I have experienced. And, you know, if people want to have a conversation, you know, we'll get around to what do you do? I'm a pastor. You know, and sometimes you, you do lead with that and not, not always. And, and then the questions come. Usually, usually it, it's funny because people will ask me questions and then they'll apologize. Like, I hope I'm not offending you. I hope you're not getting angry. It's like, no, I am not getting angry. This is what you should do. You should ask somebody who knows, you know, somebody's you know, maybe got some training and the call to do this. That would be a pastor. Uh, 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 you sh those you should be asking them questions, you know, and they should be able to answer. There's plenty of things I can't answer. There are mysteries and stuff like that. So anyway, uh, you know, you think about being part of this apostolic church, you know, and so you see this sort of okay, um, don't be afraid, take what Christ has given us and proclaim it. Um, and the whole idea is, is that we all you know rest and acknowledge Christ. It's not like it's some sort of quiz, like how much do I know about Christ? And I got to stand up and confess that before the world. It's, it is, uh, it is. Do I understand that I am saved? I'm covered with the righteousness of Christ. You know, is that what I cling to? Uh, I can, I can confess Christ, meaning a Christ that I invent, where I'm still relying on my good works and thinking I'm earning my way to heaven. We as Christians who profess Christ realize, man, you know, I, I'm, I'm lost, and I am. I am totally thinking, you think about, you know, searching for answers, like, why am I the way they am? Well, the scripture tells us I'm fallen. I'm under the curse. Why am I going to die? Why do these, why, why does evil exist in the world? Why does all this stuff happen? And we turn to the word of God and we begin to see answers there. Uh, and then as Christians, we begin to see because of what he gives us to the church and because how these gifts open our eyes and open our ears, we begin to see things through the lens of the cross and, and things begin to make sense, not, you know, completely. So, um, this is what that, you know, acknowledging Christ is, is the necessity of that cross and the necessity of our participa participation in the cross, meaning, you know, receiving what Christ did on the cross and then taking up our, our crosses and following him, uh, which is a daily thing. Uh, so, and then this, this is, this is, this is where, wow, you know, and, and I think we all experience this. We're seeing it now. Maybe when somebody my age was young, we didn't see it so much, although it was there. Uh, but it was a bit of a different nation. Uh, don't think I have come to bring peace. Now, this is the Prince of Peace speaking this. Don't think I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace. Now, he came to make peace between us and God, to reconcile. Now, um, you know, but in the fallen world, that, that good news of Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, you know, the, the, the fallen world does not want to receive it. That's how we begin. That's We read that on Christmas Day. It's a good reminder of Christmas Day. That he came to his own, and his own did not want to receive. They didn't want him. You know, uh, uh, I've not come to bring peace, but a sword. I've come to set a man against his father and a daughter against her mother. But that's sobering. But we experience that. We're experiencing that more and more. I, I, you see it in the families of our congregations, and of course, they they speak with us about that. Pastors with me about how families are divided. And sad, sad tale. Uh, Many of my brothers in office and, and people in the congregation as well, not just isolated to us as pastors, are 
the hearts are heavy, broken, because we have people, you know, that are very close to us, often our children, that you hear the voice of the world, you know, hear the voice of, you know, pop stars who are not qualified to speak on these things, whatever. They want to be cool, they want to be loved, they want to be, and we hear the church is saying no. Um, uh, you know, you know, like if I say, which I should, you know, frequently, it's like, you know, before, you know, think about the whole transgender issue, before we, we get, you know, the surgical knives out and start mutilating body, I think a report came out that I think was last year, uh, 14,000 people, you know, kids, kids, children underwent, I want to say, uh, uh, somebody can ask me later and I'll, I'll, I'll share the article, you know, but over 10,000 kids, kids throughout the nation got, you know, um, uh, surgeries done to their bodies, you know, when those things cannot be undone. So, you know, this is considered hateful. What I'm about to say, maybe before we get the knives out, we should talk and pray and, and see if there are other, you know, maybe you'll outgrow this. You know, um, it, that's truly loving somebody, not just saying, I'm going to affirm you in everything you do. But I've just said something that the, the culture considers very hateful and gets very angry at. I mean, you know, people will scream at me and screech at me for saying something like that or, or you know, upholding the life of the unborn. Um, so, and this divides families. You know, so we see often it's our children that run off to, you know, we send them off to university and we haven't taught them how to drink, to think critically, to analyze arguments, uh, you know, to, you know, find out if sources are qualified to speak on the topic they're speaking on, you know, uh, uh, all the things that, you know, we used to teach, critical thinking was teach that, you know, you didn't, you didn't have to wait to college to do that. And, and so our kids come back, and it's not just our kids, they come back and just look, at this, look us in the eye, and, and I've had this said to me many times, not, not by my children, no, but, uh, you know, those who are close to me have had their own families look at me and say, you're hateful and intolerant just for proclaiming the truth. And you probably had that experience. Um, uh, so, and Christ reminds us, he goes, okay, that's the gut check. You know, you got to take a stand. You know, he gives us his word. That's all we have. He gives us his truth. That's all we have. And there is no other truth. You know, he is truth. And there is only one name under heaven by which we would be saved. And ultimately, when we think about these things, that's always our goal. Is that, you know, that we would speak the truth so, so people wouldn't be caught in these web of lies. And they may hate us for speaking the truth. I mean, you can think about your children again. If you have small children in the house, you know, when you speak the truth to them, and you do, they don't necessarily love you for it. You know, they might love you later for it, you know, years, years later. Now we'll come. You know, for us as Christians, too, as we speak the truth, maybe not to the life to come, you know, but it will come. So, and then he tells you, you know, whoever receives you receives me. That's great. You know, the pressure's kind of off. Too. You know, it's like, okay, it's him. Uh, and, and then uh, um, he also reminds, now he's speaking of the apostles here, the little ones. Whoever gives one of these little ones even a cup of cold water because he is a disciple, truly I say to you, who by no means loses reward. Um you know, people take care of their pastors. These people took care of the apostles, and he's reminding so don't worry, you know, you can go out people, on, you know, God will provide people to take care of you. Um, and uh, um, and that's part of our life together in Christ. Uh, so anyway, this this is, it's it's a sobering text. There's more I could say about it, but I was a few minutes late getting started, so I know uh, I'm not quite over, but I've already been talking for 24 minutes. So let's stop and uh, confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father, Almighty Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we pray for the marriages and families of your people, that husbands and wives, parents and children would live in ordered harmony, and that harmony ordered according to the word of God and nothing else. We pray that we would see the great blessings in submitting to your word and the good gifts you shower upon us. We pray for parents who must raise children alone and that most difficult of tasks surround their children with mentors, a people of God that may um, stand in and help uh, as you give them the ability to do so. Keep those single parents from falling into loneliness and despair and may their earthly needs be met, and may we provide for them as you give us the ability to do so. May we be a blessing as your people to our communities and neighborhoods, boldly proclaiming your word of life um, and proclaiming the beauty of the good gifts that you have given to us. Heavenly Father, we ask you to bless those who travel. We ask you to be with those who are, who are um, in the path of the storm which has made landfall, um, uh, Hurricane Milton, and those who are still recovering from the effects of Hurricane Helene. We ask you to be keep people safe in their homes and shelters, that the storm would pass with a minimal bit of damage. We thank you for the leaders that, that uh, have mobilized and prepared, and pray that you bless uh, the efforts of relief and recovery workers, and that uh, um, you would still the, uh, the violence of this storm. We ask you to continue to be with those who uh, are without power. We ask you to bless those who are providing food and water and shelter. And again, we ask you to provide favorable weather uh, that uh, recovery and rebuilding efforts may, may begin and continue. Heavenly Father, we ask you to be with those who are crying out to you for healing. We ask you to be with our sister in Christ, Elena, uh, who will be undergoing a procedure tomorrow. Kathy, Roger, Myron, Dennis, Dawn, Dave, Joanne, Betty, Pam, Donna, Dorothy, Pat, um, uh, Angie, and our sister in Christ, Wanda, who underwent a procedure earlier today. We pray for Robert and Tom, for Ellie, for Stephanie, for Eric, Susan, M, Aaron, Grant, Joan, Anita, Dave, Bob, Jenny, Betty, Jeremy, Scott, Amy, Fern, Allie, Allison, Paul, Luke, Aaron, Jim, Tom, Eric, Beth, Dylan, Jeff, Christy, Brad, Clint, Marlis, Karen, Sue, Tim, Bert, Heather, John, Joe, Liberty, Dawn, Lori, Chris, Phil, Katie, Michelle, Bethany, Robo, Tammy, Joy, Tyler, Amber, Anita, Tom, Carly, and all who cry out to you. Heavenly Father, according to your good and gracious will, place your healing hand upon them. Be with the nurses and doctors that care for them, that they might be your instruments for their well-being. And all things, keep them mindful of Christ our Lord, his victory over sin and death itself. All this we ask in the precious name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Visit our dwellings, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body, soul, all things. Let your holy angel be with me, the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And I'm going to sing one stanza of Let Us Ever Walk with Jesus. I'll sing stanza three. Let us gladly die with Jesus, since by death he conquered death. He will free us from destruction, give to us immortal breath. Let us mortify all passions that would lead us into sin, and the grave that shuts us in shall but prove the gate to heaven. Jesus, here with you I die there to live with you on high. That stands at three and our four in that hymn of Let Us Ever Walk With Jesus. What a, what a wonderful thought. Uh, the grave that shuts us in because of the blood of Christ shall but prove the gate to heaven. Uh.
Wonderful thought. Let me say in closing this beautiful little prayer for life. Dear gracious Father, source of all life, grant us forgiveness for our failures to protect the lives of the helpless and innocent. Dispatch your holy angels to safeguard the unborn babies presently under the shadow of death. Show your mercy to mothers who are alone and afraid and grant them the courage and resolve they need to choose life for their little ones. Hear us, O Lord, for the sake of our Savior Jesus Christ, whose blood cleanses us even from the most grievous of sins. Amen. I bid you a blessed rest, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Have a good night.